What's up guys? This is Downing, and I am super excited to be back after nearly a year and a half on the DL. And today, I'd like to present to you my latest and greatest project, the Tiger Boy Advance. Tiger Boy? Didn't we already do this one? Oh yeah. What's up guys? As I said, this is Downing, and I am really excited to be back at this again. And as much as I'd love to be coming back to you with something new, we're just gonna have to settle for something new-ish. But I still think very interesting. Let's have a good look. So, a little over a year ago, I released a small project called the Tiger Boy Advance. The Game Boy Advance in a 3D printed Tiger Electronics style casing. And not only was I happy with its end result, it did get a fair bit of attention around the internet, making it one of my most successful projects in the past few years. And truthfully, this really was not an overly complex mod, and making a custom portable console out of a already portable console seemed very much like a joke without a punchline. Why? But it did have a few 21st century upgrades, like the funny playing IPS screen and a rechargeable USB-C battery pack. So the question then became, if I was so satisfied with how this project came out originally, why go back and redo it? Well, let's just say the Midwest Gaming Classic of 2022 took its toll, and the Tiger Boy came back with some teeth missing. So at that point, I decided that if I was going to fix this, it was just going to make more sense to start over with a brand new casing, and then just simply swap the parts and the electronics over into the new one. But as we all know, there's nothing ever simple about saying you're going to do something simply. One of the biggest gripes I had with the original case was that the base enclosure was SLA 3D printed. And while this did give me an amazing surface finish and fine details, I've still yet to find a way to stop these cases from warping over time, even when using resins specifically designed not to warp. And even though I knew the odds were not in my favor, I tried reprinting the cases a couple more times and, unsurprisingly, was left with useless prints and hours of wasted print time and resin. But my new friend Lame Dad probably has the most satisfying way of dealing with these situations. Damn, that felt good! So it was at this point, I made the decision to revert back to the standard FDM 3D printing method for the case and use SLA for the finer details and the buttons. This has been a tried and true practice for me for several years now and really is the way I should have gone to begin with. However, the whole case was originally designed around SLA 3D printing in mind, which meant the front and back halves were two solid pieces and were really not ideal for an FDM 3D printing approach. So this of course made things a lot more complicated, and instead of trying to print with odd supports or at weird angles, I took the approach of surgically butchering my original case files to break them into FDM printable parts. This redesign did take some time, but I was able to keep the whole thing in the original footprint, and as you can see, though the warping issue was resolved, it came at the expense of all the finer details that were once printed on the case directly. And of course, this still did come with the endless hours of sanding, filling, priming, and painting, but so worth it in the end. So one of the standout features on the original Tiger Boy was the custom screen protector that I designed from scratch. But the method used was a direct reverse print onto 16th inch acrylic which proved difficult because I could not find any 16th inch thick media that was designed for digital printing. And of course this meant that the ink was not going to adhere properly and could easily peel right off. This forced us down the road of pre-cutting the material, which in turn led us to a printing alignment nightmare. And so with this project, I entered the world of vinyl adhesives and die cutting. The setup for this process was relatively easy, as I was able to use the original artwork and just redraw the cut paths for what our cutter needed. And the end results and the precision really spoke for itself. Removal and application, however, were a bit trickier, as aligning the sticker with the 3D printed bezel did take a little bit of working, but eventually lined up damn near perfect. After the vinyl was applied, I then mounted the bezel to the front half of the case using some glue and plastic welding. I then took the piece of pre-cut acrylic and press fit it into place. And with the casework complete, it was time to start transferring over the electronics. 
Now, to be all honest, I was truly thinking I was going to run into some unforeseen problems when transferring the innards from case to case. But aside from carefully fighting with some glue in the old case and, once again, gluing the power switch closed, the transfer went remarkably well. There were a couple size miscalculations with a few of the chopped and retrofitted pieces, and there were some button adjustments that needed to be made. But within a couple hours, it was back up and working beautifully. I really could not have asked for a smoother transfer than what I had, and the opportunity to fix some of the annoyances that bothered me in the first build was great. So all in all, I was very glad I decided to fix this up. But the very best part about fixing this up was yet to come, as my pending trip to the 2023 Midwest Gaming Classic would soon blow me away. Last year's MGC was an incredible time. I got a chance to meet a ton of cool people, and also got to experience getting on stage and present a panel about the history of portable making. But what was really cool was to see how highly people thought of the Tiger Boy and just how much it made them laugh. And as awesome as that love was last year, it was totally eclipsed by the amount of love that came from it this year. And I didn't get any reaction footage of it at all. But that's okay, because I have a feeling, just like last year, the Tiger Boy will be making a cameo in one or two other content creators' videos, which I find just as satisfying. But really, it was the whole room that put on a fantastic display and had everything from the OG build tactics to the very latest high-end custom manufacturing methods, all beautifully laid out for the attendees to take in. It really is one of the reasons I love the event so much because it allows all aspects of gaming to shine, especially with what some would consider a pretty obscure hobby in the gaming realm to begin with. But the people you get to meet and the contacts you get to make only strengthen this hobby's place in the gaming world, and it shows no signs of slowing down. It really was an amazing time at MGC this year, and again, I was so thrilled that this project was so well received. Days like this really do push my inspiration button, and I really do want to get back into this on a more regular basis. I hope you all enjoyed this little update, and as always, please be sure to like and subscribe as I've actually got a couple of projects in the pipeline that, with any luck, will see the light of day. Thanks again, guys. See you soon. Metal! As much as I'd like to remember what I'm saying, I can't. So, bravest and... And to say... God, why?